We read a verse, we read a um, parable. In this parable, Jesus tells us a story. He says, one man had a vineyard and he decided to look for people to work on this vineyard. He goes to the marketplace. In the old days and in some of the remote areas in the world today, this is still done like that too. Without access to Greg's list, without an access to a, a work source, or without an access where people can apply online, what usually a rich men would do, or employers, is he would send a servant to this certain place in the city where all the unskilled, low-paying workers would gather in hope for a job. These men had a very rough life because every day they worked at a different job site and every day they worked for a different employer. They didn't have a stability in their job. They would come every day hoping somebody would hire them for that day. And this man, instead of sending someone, he went himself to this market at six in the morning. That's when the Jewish day, the work day began, not at nine, six in the morning. He went in there and he took some men and he hired them. But the Bible says that the first men he hired, they agreed with him on the price. Which I am assuming this is how it happened. He came and he says, anybody looking for work? Hey, it's me, it's me. I am looking for work. How much are you going to pay? He says, well, how much do you want? Can you give me one denarii? A denarii in that time was equivalent to $7.50 or about $8. For that time, $8 a day was considered a Roman soldier's average pay, which was a, you know, like a government job. So it's considered a very lofty salary. $8 per day, we, I mean, just not long ago in America, to receive $1.50 per minimum wage was considered a luxury. And so $8 2,000 years ago was a lot of money for that day. So I can assume the owner says, oh, fine, I can pay you one denarii. Let's go to work. They go and they work. He goes at 9 o'clock in the morning again and sees some other brothers. He says, guys, I have more work. Do you want to go work? Yes. Except these guys don't ask for a salary. They don't even find out how much they're going to get paid. I mean, they go on a limp risking, what if he doesn't pay us? What if he's going to say, well, whatever you did for this day is for the glory of God. You know, like one of those Christian people, can you do it for the glory of God? It means I'm not going to pay you. He comes at 12 o'clock and he gets guys and says, could you go and work at my vineyard? They said, yes, we'll go work at your vineyard. But these guys don't ask him, how much will you pay us? Then he comes at 3 o'clock and hires guys again. And then last time he comes around 5, 5-ish o'clock in the evening. One more hour left, left till 6 o'clock to send him home. And he hires guys and he doesn't tell them how much they're going to get paid. Imagine you're working for a boss who hired you and you never asked him and you never know how much you're going to get paid. That's a lot of trust. That's a lot of risk if you have a family to support. The day is over. And so the guys who came last, who only worked one hour, you know, they're surprised. They're like, I wonder if we're going to get paid at all. If he just simply took us and made us occupied. He comes and he gives them eight bucks. He gives them a full day's wage. You, you can imagine the smile on their face. You can imagine the joy. Oh my God, this is so awesome. You know, we did not waste all day. Though we were waiting, we actually got paid for the hours we did not work. How awesome is that? Then the guys who came first, who bargained, and who agreed and probably had it signed by their lawyer, make sure they get one denarii. To their greatest surprise, they got one denarii. Except now, instead of being thankful for receiving a luxurious pay, they started to grumble. Because why didn't they get more since they worked longer? And the owner looks at them and he says, I thought you wanted one denarii. You asked for one denarii. These guys did not ask for anything, going on the limp, trusting, I am going to be good and I'm going to be fair. But you guys asked for 
a salary and you got a salary. I want to share with you a few simple nuggets from this. People who fight for fairness rarely experience favor. When you come to God and you bargain for fairness, you set your limit and you begin to put a limit and you begin to say that this is what I want and that's it. I am going to work eight hours and I want eight times ten, eighty dollars. When you set a limit for your life, you will have what you bargain with. These men who got hired at six o'clock, they only received what they worked for. Not one dollar more, not one dollar less. The guys who got hired last, they did not get what they worked for. They got so much more on the top. They worked for one hour and got paid for 12. That is favor. Favor is not when you don't work at all and you get money. Some of us think that's favor. That's called laziness and steroids. <laughs> favor is when you do work. But the work that you do, you get rewarded much more. Yeah. Favor is not when you don't study for your school and you show up at the math exam and God just supernaturally downloaded all the knowledge and you know all the answers. That's called plagiarism. That's not favor. Favor is when you do study but maybe you did not have enough time to study and God adds his touch to it and you receive more than what you actually studied for. Favor is when you sow a peanut and you don't receive a peanut back, but you receive a hundred peanut. Favor is not when you, I worked for one hour and I received. That's called fairness. Favor is when you get what you also did not deserve. I want to encourage you this evening to remind you, your God allows you to set a limit on Him. You can experience his faithfulness or you could experience his favor. The guys who had hired at six o'clock, they experienced that the owner who hired them was faithful. The guys who had hired at six in the evening experienced the owner that hired them was full of favor. How will you experience God? Many times we allow our wallet to determine the size of our dream. Many people allow their education to allow to measure the size of the expectation of the kind of future they want. God does not want your future to reflect your discipline. He wants your future to reflect His goodness. He wants you never to be able to brag and take credit for yourself and say, look what my discipline, prayer and fasting has done. He wants you always to be able to say, I prayed, I fasted, I gave, but what God gave me supersedes what I inputted in. He added his favor on the top of that.